Chapters 2, 3, and 4 of Northanger Abbey are all about how to meet people in Regency England. And today we're going to talk about just that. My name is Elizabeth Henderson and I write Regency romances. Welcome to the Jane Austen podcast where we are talking in this season about all things Northanger Abbey. My hope is to be able to give you a little bit of the background of the cultural and historical things that are going on so that you can better understand the Jane Austen world. Before we dive in to today's material, I just want to ask you a quick question. What are the things that you're curious about that you're finding in Northanger Abbey? Please be sure and leave those in the comments so that I can answer them and hopefully help you out a little bit with whatever it is that you're struggling with. And if this information is something that you get value out of, then I hope you'll subscribe so that we can continue on this journey together. Okay, so let's get started. Chapter two opens up with, again, us seeing that Catherine and her family are just so normal. Now, right after we start talking about how normal Catherine is, we also see all of those examples that Austin puts in of what would have happened to a traditional Gothic novel heroine. She might have been kidnapped, there might have been highwaymen who were robbers in the Regency era. There might have been the possibility of her squandering all of her money, of something terrible happening to her. There might have been an accident. And in essence, what would have happened is she would have become extremely miserable. So at this point, we're all kind of hoping that none of this happens to Catherine, but we do have an inkling that something is going to happen when she gets to Bath. Now, unfortunately, one of the things that she and Mrs. Allen face when they reach Bath and they go to an evening's entertainment is that they don't know anybody. In Regency England, if you didn't know anybody, then you couldn't talk to anybody. Part of the way that everything was structured in society was that if you knew someone, then they would introduce you to the people that they knew, but you couldn't really start a conversation with a complete stranger unless you had been formally introduced to them. That means that during this first evening in Bath, that Catherine and Mrs. Allen are stuck kind of at the end of this table with these other people who are having tea, but they can't really talk with them because they haven't been formally introduced. And there's no way for them to be formally introduced because they don't know anyone. Fortunately, when we go into chapter three, this situation improves drastically because the master of ceremony, who was a person whose job it was to introduce people and particularly young people so that they could make friendships and so that they could enjoy being in Bath and being in the assembly rooms. This man introduced Catherine, our heroine, to Henry Tilney. Now, I always find it kind of interesting and actually kind of sweet that Mr. Allen, who plays a very minimal role in everything that's going on, actually takes the time to check out who Henry Tilney is, that Henry is a clergyman, remember we talked about that last time, and that he's basically a good upstanding young man. So he's someone that Catherine can feel encouraged about knowing. And obviously Catherine starts to enjoy her time in meeting and talking with Henry Tilney. So chapter four brings us to a different way of meeting people. All of a sudden, Mrs. Allen is recognized by Mrs. Thorpe. They had a previous acquaintance. And so all of a sudden, a whole world of opportunity opens up for Catherine because now the Thorpes are known to them, so Catherine can make the acquaintance of Mrs. Thorpe and her daughters, 
and one of those people that she meets is Isabella. Now, Isabella is about four years older than Catherine. So that is a great deal of experience of being out in society, of knowing other people, and kind of knowing how to negotiate social relationships. We have to remember that Catherine has always been in a very protective environment. She was raised for her first 17 years pretty much just with her family in a clergyman's household. So she has likely never met young men like Henry Tilney who were not known to her family for quite some time. She also has never probably had a close friend who was outside of her own family or that immediate circle of friends in their neighborhood. So these are all big opportunities for Catherine in her getting accustomed to how to function in the world. We also learn in just a little fact that is tucked in there that James, who is Catherine's brother, is also known to the Thorpe family and that James actually spent some time with them during the Christmas holidays. So this is something for us to watch out for as the plot moves forward. And just as we've kind of gotten Catherine and Henry and the Thorpes all moving forward on a certain path, Austin at the very end of chapter four brings us back to this parody of the Gothic novel with this wonderful paragraph that is at the very end of the chapter. I'll let you read that for yourself. But basically it's poking fun of all of the explanation that would have often been part of a gothic novel. So the fact that Mrs. Thorpe is able to keep her whole story to a couple of sentences is something that would not have happened in a gothic novel. There would have been pages and pages and pages talking about her history and the history of her family and just really belaboring all the details. I for one am very grateful that Austin spared us from all those pages and pages of Mrs. Thorpe and her family's history. Now I want to ask you, are there any questions that you'd like to ask about what's going on in these chapters of Northanger Abbey? If there are questions that you have, please leave them in the comments so that I can help you out and answer them. If you found this video to be of value, then please hit like and subscribe so that we can continue this journey together. My name is Elizabeth Henderson. I write Regency romances. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.